Nitro Reviews. It's amazing how far entertainment has gone since the advent of the internet. Nowadays, many creators, like us for example, have the opportunity to produce their own independent content on the web, rather than dealing with the struggles of the entertainment industry. There's a large variety of independent shows you can watch online right now. Although, this isn't an entirely new revelation. People have been posting their own animations online for decades now. These works were most prevalent on the site Newgrounds, and many of these creators would go on to work on big name projects. That being said though, Newgrounds didn't reach the height of its popularity until the mid 2000s, and for a long time the site was more so used to make games instead of animations. Which leads us to one of the pioneers of internet animation, Happy Tree Friends. The series, owned by Mondo Media, made its way online in 1999, and it was still producing episodes up until 2016. The series got its own TV show in the early 2000s, a movie was put into production back in 2015, and you are still certain to find merchandise for the series in stores, still, today! This series was a big deal, and it helped pave the way for the web series we have today. So. A series this popular must be something special, right? Right? Yeah. I'm certain many of you are well aware of this series, but for those who may not be, um, this, uh, this series isn't quite what it seems. And from what I've shown you so far, the show looks like it's super cute and has these cartoon animals just living their best lives. And yeah, it does appear that way, huh? In fact, that's basically what a lot of the merchandises show as well. Uh, so what exactly is the issue then? Well, allow me to tell you my experience with the show. Back when I was about four or five years old, I was living with my grandparents. And one day, my Aunt Brandy called me to her room. Uh, she told me she wanted to show me a cartoon, much like the ones she loved on Nick Jr. So she pulled up this series called Happy Tree Friends on her computer, and I was actually really into it just from the intro alone. And the episode in particular is called This Is Your Knife. The episode begins with four cute little critters on a camping trip, and they sit by the fire and roast some marshmallows, but... uh. But one of these critters isn't like the others, and not just in his attire, but he also isn't quite right. Um, the crackling of the fire started to set something off in him. Now, as a young child, I wasn't aware of, nor could I understand the concept of post-traumatic stress disorder. So when I watched this, I had no idea what was happening, nor was I even prepared for the absolute onslaught of blood and gore that followed. I just watched in horror as my aunt laughed at my reaction. <laughs> and it, when it was just said and done, I tried leaving immediately, and she wanted to show me more episodes, but I just wasn't having it. Knowing the series' true nature, though, it's astonishing that the series became as popular as it did. And to this day, there really wasn't or hasn't been a cartoon series that had glorified gore as this one has. Well, okay, that's not entirely true, but you won't see those other shows putting out merchandise to this day. So why was it, and why is it, still so popular to this day? Well, I'd say its biggest attraction is the shock factor. Every episode finds new and creative ways to torture these cute little cartoon characters. And much like a car crash, it's hard to look away. Some may genuinely find it funny, while others find it so shocking that they need to see how far it can go. And on top of that, the show's aesthetic is a very marketable one. It's a kid-friendly style that allows it to be marketed as hard as it was. Also, as one of the earliest forms of online entertainment, it definitely carved itself into internet history. And no doubt it's a nostalgic series for many, but not so much for me. Uh, besides that one childhood story, I actually didn't revisit the series until my senior year of high school. It was then that I watched it from the beginning to end, and I actually really enjoyed it. <laughs> 
though my reason for liking it isn't so cut and dry, I was more so on the side of people who watched it because of how shocking it was. It made my skin crawl. Like, I, I just couldn't stop watching it. But the more episodes I watched, the more I started to understand what just made the show so watchable in the first place. Happy Tree Friends Violence isn't as senseless as it may appear. There's definitely something, there's a method to this madness that makes it so interesting to watch. You see, it's, it's clear the show's meant to be an edgy take on children's media. Cute, adorable, and very marketable cartoon characters getting brutally murdered during their innocent little adventures. That much is clear, but that begs the question, how does Happy Tree Friends go about this? Well, the show doesn't simply just throw in realistic gore. But rather, the show's violence is taken to an unrealistic extreme. Instead of adding realism to the show, it simply applies gore to its cartoon physics. The exaggerated nature of the show's brutality makes it such an interesting experience. This expertise in the show's execution is, without a doubt, what carried it, which is proven by the show's final season so far. See, the thing with Happy Tree Friends is it's not a very consistent show. It has a long history of hiatuses and cancellations. In response to one such hiatus, Mondo Media released a collection of five episodes back in 2016 called Happy Tree Friends Still Alive. These episodes were put on sale rather than being released for free, and presumably the money from sales would be used to help finance future episodes. But while sales for the episodes were okay, they weren't anywhere near Mondo Media's expectations, and that's when the series had been stuck in limbo. The only thing we know of is the movie that's in production, but as the years go on, even that seems to have fallen into limbo with no news of its production since 2017. With all of that being said, the last season wasn't really good. The new episodes clearly lack something the older episodes had, and it's the pure creativity the older episodes had the first episode of the new season is just a rehash of an older episode, and through it you can easily see what made the older episodes so watchable. All of this to say, I really, really like the series. And this is coming from someone who really isn't a fan of gory works. The series just has so much more going for it that I can't help but binge through episodes every time I see it. And if any of this interests you, then I would definitely recommend checking it out. But if you get squeamish around gore, then I wouldn't advise you see it. And I think that's going to do it for this review. If there's any piece of animation you'd like us to review in the future, then be sure to list them in the comments below. And if you'd like to support the content we make, then be sure to subscribe as that helps out a ton. And thank you for watching. We hope to see you in the next review.